All right, thank you so much, Mr. Marcus Esther, uh, attorney at law, very, very distinguished. Uh, I, I'm super excited to have this conversation with you and I think it's gonna be uh, very beneficial for our young folks right now. We are talking about police accountability, um, mm -hmm. injustice and how you know we as the community can really survive these police interactions. And so one of the main reasons I wanted to talk to you because you are a criminal defense attorney, correct? Correct. And so you 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 operate in the legal system, right? Your clients Absolutely. have had yes. interactions with police for various reasons uh, that every leads day. them yeah. every day that leads every them day. to your front door. Mm -hmm. So you are yeah. the perfect person to to kind of help us walk through this. So I just want to say again, thank you so much for being here. Uh, and I'm pretty sure the audience uh, thanks you as well. Thank you for having me, Quinn. I love it. Love it. Yeah. Anytime I can, you know, share my wisdom, I'm always there. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's just hop right into it. So uh, based on mm -hmm. my last conversation that I had with the police officer, um, <clears throat> we really discussed this notion about compliance. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the premise of the whole conversation was, you know, even if a cop is being uh, irate or rude or, you know, whatever the case may be, the word that you really need to keep in your mind, although it's not, uh, it may offend you, is to comply. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. What right. What do you say to that? Because um, right. we got some young people listening who was like, well, I don't I don't want to be harassed by the cops. Sometimes they're mm -hmm. bothering me. You know, they don't know everything that's going on. Why do I have to comply uh, when I didn't mm -hmm. do anything wrong? Right. Absolutely. So let, let me let me try to break that down. Um, so first, I've handled numerous criminal cases. That's pretty much all I do. And of course, every criminal case starts off with an arrest or some interaction with an officer. And so, you know, we try to tell people, hey, comply with the, with the cop and comply just means if they ask for your name, give it to them. If they ask for your driver's license, give it to them. And then you have some of my clients who said, oh, well, you know, I don't want to comply. I don't have to do this. I know my rights. Nothing you can do in that situation can make that encounter better. It can make it worse, but nothing can make it better. Or you can just keep it the same. And so in order to just keep it the same, if you have your driver's license, uh, pull it out. Let's say you're driving a car and an officer stops you. You see the lights, have your driver's license ready, insurance. You need that. Um, if you don't have your license, hopefully you have a picture of your license. If you don't have either of those, they can hit you with another charge. So in addition to whatever they stopped you for, you can have a charge of failure to ID, um, invalid license, all kinds of stuff. So to prevent all of that, comply by saying, hey, this is my name. I have this. I have that. You don't have to do anything else. That's it. Yeah. Just your name, ID yourself, and that's, now, that's now pretty you, much. Yeah. You reference the car. What if? What if? Because uh, some of our, our, our young folks watch it, they may not have cars. They may take public transportation. Mm -hmm. They may be walking. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What is is the standard still the same if they're walking with friends or by themselves, and a cop decides to engage with them for various reasons? Yes. So it's still the same. It's still the mm -hmm. same on the front end. Like I said, nothing you can do with the police account can make it better, can make it worse. Mm -hmm. Pull out your ID. If they say, hey, stop right mm -hmm. there, stop. Um, do you have any ID? What's your name? Tell them your name. Give them your ID. Now, we can take care of everything on the back end. So if the cop mm -hmm. just stopped you just to mess with you, we got that in the courtroom. But we need you to do you know, everything you should have done, which was pull out your information, give them your name. Mm -hmm. I've had... In particular, it was one situation where there was a young black man. He was in front of a uh, convenience store. He had just went in to purchase uh, something to drink, something to smoke, and like a bag of chips. He walked outside. There were two officers across the street watching the store. They had been watching the store the whole day. And um, the white officer got out the car, went up to the crowd because he was standing out there and was like a, some other guys. Now, I don't know if he knew those other guys that were out there. He just went in the shop, came out started smoking, and then an officer ran up on him, was like, hey, then my guy took off running. He takes off running. Um, as he's running, he throws a gun out, and then the cop stops him. I say yeah. all that to say it because we were able to get that portion suppressed because the officer went up there and just started messing with him. The right. guy said, hey, this, this is who I am, and then the officer tried to come after him. He took off. The officer had no reason to chase him. You mm -hmm. can they can ask, you know, who 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 are you? You have to ID yourself. But anything else after that, if you didn't commit any crime, if you didn't do anything wrong, 
I mean, you're not being detained. They didn't say, hey, I'm going to detain you. You can leave. You're free to go. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then when the officer started chasing him and started, you know, doing all this other stuff, started harassing him, we were mm-hmm. able to take care of that in the court. But let's say this guy started cussing, started fussing, trying to fight back. It would have went, you know, completely different. So right. even though he ran, he said his name at first. He, he said, hey, this is who I am. The officer never mm-hmm. said you're being detained. And then he took off running. That's different. But yeah. like I said, you don't, you don't want to make the situation hot. And what I mean by hot is you don't right. want to start. Right. Right. But could, I, I would ask, even in him mm-hmm. running, and I, I am mm-hmm. far from victim blaming, right? Uh-huh. Um, mm-hmm. Would you say that running could have created a dangerous situation as well? Because the goal is we want to get home alive. Like you said, we, right. want, we can take care of it on the back end. So I understand right. that the, the that the cop harassed him, but even the yep. run, uh, yep. would you would you say yep. kind of could have potentially contributed to a dangerous situation for Absolutely. that citizen? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Like I said, when he he had a gun on him. Now, of course, right. that's not nothing is wrong. You can have a gun if it's if it's registered to you. If you have your license, all of that cool. You can have a gun. Right. But if you take off one, do you just throw a gun? They don't know if that gun is connected to you or whatever. Mm-hmm. They. If they saw a gun, they could have shot him because they're like, oh, he has a gun. We don't know what else he has. We can shoot him. And so, right. yes, that could have escalated the situation. So I don't advise doing that. I'm just mm-hmm. saying if you do run or if something happens, we can take care of it on the back end. But I do not advise running. However, you yeah. are not detained. If they don't say I'm detaining you or you're under arrest, you're free to leave. Mm-hmm. So what and about what about children, children, right? What about kids? Mm-hmm. Uh Kids that are under 18. Well, that, mm. that's the definition of kids. Uh, yeah. Do they have those same rights to say, well, the yeah. cop is not detaining me. I can walk away from this situation. Yeah. If this is, yeah. I'm not understanding what's happening. I don't have to stay in this spot. Absolutely. It's the same thing. The same thing. Because mm. instead of going into the criminal system, you're going into the juvenile justice system. Uh, okay. Still similar, except it's not a criminal case. It's more like a civil type case. But you can still get charged with the same thing if a crime was committed. So right. your rights are still the same. Just because you're under the age of, you know, 18, whatever, your rights are still the same. So, mm-hmm. hey, if he say, who are you? Show him some kind of ID. Um, if you have it, because if you're like, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, you may not have mm-hmm. certain identification. So just tell him your right. name. Right. Right. Um, but again, if he doesn't say you are detained, if he doesn't say you're under arrest, you're free to leave. Mm-hmm. Now, if he's trying to say, hey, what's your name? And then you like, I don't have to tell you anything. I'm gone. That's that. That's different. That's, that's different. a different but situation. Once you, that's a different situation because mm-hmm. you didn't get charged. Um, mm-hmm. Like I said, you can get charged with failure to identify and all kinds of other stuff. Then they can arrest you right then and there. Right. So, okay. As long as you say your name and then, you know, just know, hey, I'm free to leave. And you don't mm-hmm. have to talk. I don't, I don't advise clients or potential clients to keep talking. Once mm-hmm. you've identified yourself, um, I, I'll shut up. I'll mm-hmm. be quiet. Because like I said, you're going to make the situation worse the more you talk. Mm-hmm. So don't do that. Just just stop talking. And and just to clarify in that being able to leave, we're talking about, you know, just walking on the street, right? If a cop pulls you mm-hmm. over in a car, then mm-hmm. that interaction uh, should play out in its entirety. And then you leave? Right, right. And okay. so the reason with that, so let me let me back up. Let's say okay. if you're walking and an officer uh, cuts on his lights and he's following you, like you're walking and the officer pulls up behind you with his lights. That's different. When those lights are activated, there's like this this idea that I'm being detained or I'm being stopped. So I, I can't leave. Okay. Now, of course, we can we can follow up with that again in court. We can make some arguments on that. But generally, no, once they've triggered the lights, they got the sirens on. If you're in a car and they're behind you, you can't just drive off. Don't do that. Um, but if you're on foot and an officer just walks up to you, that's a different story. Got but, it. you know, in this scenario, if you're in your car, the lights mm-hmm. come on, you can't leave. you got to wait until he say, hey, you can leave. Because if you got leave, it. then he can say you're evading arrest in a vehicle. That's a felony. You don't want that. Right. We don't want those problems. No, Not we don't all. want those problems. And you said something um, in, in my previous conversation uh, with, with uh, a constable. Uh, that mm-hmm. that we're you know showing to our young folks. Um, mm-hmm. He talked about winning the uh, uh, potentially losing the battle, but winning the war. 
And mm-hmm. I had to walk through some things because based on, you know, uh, uh, the events of January 6th, words like that can be very triggering and you you just want to make sure you un- you're explaining yeah. exactly what you're talking about. And so what it sounds like is even when you're talking about uh, uh, handling it in court, it sounds more yeah. like the war, right? The yeah, battle absolutely. is that right interaction then there. With the, right then mm-hmm. and there with the cop, making sure you survive. We're not talking about being combative. We're not talking about fighting. We're talking about complying, although right. compliance is triggering. Even me saying mm-hmm. it, I feel I feel like I want to shake something with the idea of having to comply. Um, mm-hmm. But a cop is in a certain position. And so we comply in those moments. We may lose the battle. But if the cop is yep. acting inappropriate, uh, per, per the excellent defense counsel, we can win the war. And that's yes. the court. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So much can happen in court versus mm-hmm. on the street because when you're on the street even if you call your lawyer because i had somebody who had got stopped by um, a police officer and then he called me on the phone like bro i can't do anything right now that officer right. had unfortunately has all the power in the world so you need to do right. what he says because if you if you start trying to punch him try to fight him try to drive off those are additional charges and mm-hmm. i can't beat those because right. you know they're on camera it, it's hard whatever mm-hmm. you would stop for i can beat that but when you let's say you drive off, okay? He has a body camera. He has a dash cam. All of that is on camera. I, I can't really defend that. So we could probably right. get the original case dropped, but you just ran from the officer. So when the, the statement of, hey, you lost the battle, but you can win the war, I completely agree with that. And it has happened. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, you may go to jail that night. You may go to jail. But again, mm-hmm. if it's something that you didn't do, we ha- we can take care of that. I've had cases dismissed. Um, where it looks like the person did some stuff, but on the back end, you know, cops did something wrong or um, it, it wasn't really what it seemed to be. And I took mm-hmm. care of that. But I cannot do that the moment you get stopped. So mm-hmm. you just have to, it, it has to play out. So the biggest, the, I guess the biggest takeaway is the stop can be wrong. The stop mm-hmm. can be illegitimate. The stop mm-hmm. can be uh, the officer harassing you, being mm-hmm. a bully. Uh, Mm -hmm. abusing their power they have as an officer. But in that moment, they have all the power. And it's our job, the citizen, Mm -hmm. uh, we want to make it home. Because we have things to do. And then we also want to follow up with the accountability on the other end. But in that moment, the the cop, the officer has all the power. And so it's in Mm -hmm. our best interest as... (laughs) as painful or as annoying or as ego challenging, um, mm-hmm. even to my young men, it, as, as it threatens your manhood, um, the, the goal in that moment is to yeah. survive the interaction and comply yeah. with the officer because we can handle it on the back end. Right, and look, and let, me, let me say this too, because there's nothing that you can say in that interaction that will end it. I mean, mm-hmm. some people like if you, unless you're a lawyer, unless you're like the, the city attorney or a district attorney and you know the cop, nothing else you say could just cut it short. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I would do if I have a phone, I'll start, you know, going live on something. I'll start recording. Mm-hmm. Um, if the officer comes up and I'm like, hey, can you call your supervisor or call somebody else out here? Because you mm-hmm. want all the body cameras, as many body cameras, as many dash cams as you want on the scene. So mm-hmm. I'll be like, hey, after I give him my name or whatever, I'm like, can you call your supervisor? Call somebody. Um, yeah. and then and I'm recording. And then I'll look around and see if anybody else is recording. Like if you're in the city, try to pull over where it's like a crowd of people so they can see, you know, what's going on too. Right. If you're if you're out in like the woods somewhere, try to pull up to light and then start recording. Get on Facebook Live, if you got IG mm-hmm. live, Twitter live, mm-hmm. whatever yeah. live, get on something. Yeah. Um, that way you got eyes. You got eyes. Yes. So again, yes. like I said, nothing you can say can really end that encounter um mm-hmm. but we can always protect you in the end and in that's one thing right and if you're recording you got all those witnesses yep. you have video so we got that we can yeah. take care of it yeah I, ju- I just shared with everyone um in, a, in the previous conversation with our cop that that is something that i did i chose to mm-hmm. go ig live when i had a police interaction um uh not too long ago and that was really and i'm gonna reiterate it even and this will be our kids second mm-hmm. time hearing it that was really because in that moment i thought about just simply recording on my phone worst case scenario if i didn't survive that interaction it was going to take too many steps for somebody to see that video like my yep. family would have had to get that phone out of police custody then 
somebody would have had to figure out what my passcode was to get in the phone, right? But me going mm -hmm. Instagram Live, or like you said, there's Facebook Live, Twitter, you can mm -hmm. go live on Twitter now. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do YouTube Live, like all the yep. social platforms, you can go live now. That puts more eyeballs in real time yep. um, on what's happening to you with, with that police officer. And so uh, for me, that was just the smarter and safer play. That's why I chose to do it that way. And now the video is like everywhere, which I didn't expect. I really, mm -hmm. really did not expect that. Um, so I think I think that's good. Um, answer, answer me this, as far as handling on the back end, when you have mm -hmm. these interactions where um, we see that, that cops have done something wrong and you're getting cases dismissed or whatever the case may be, do you mm -hmm. advise your clients to then follow up and like file complaints? Uh, do you advise them to look and see if any of their civil rights were violated? Uh, what like what's the next step? Right. So I would only advise those in severe cases, severe cases. Whereas, um, let's say a guy was pulled out of the car. He was beat by an officer. Yeah. File a civil case on that. Um, if an officer stopped you and did and just said some words to you and then ultimately we got the case dismissed, I wouldn't advise filing a civil claim because. It would, you know, he has that, that qualified immunity. Really wasn't nothing great that happened for you mm -hmm. to sue him with, you know, and try to get away. Um, cases get dismissed for various reasons, not right. just on cop behavior. There are so many reasons a case can get dismissed. And every time I get a case dismissed, my client be like, I want to sue the cop. I'm like, well, why you want to sue him? Well, mm -hmm. I mean, they dismissed my case. I'm like, nah, it really wasn't the officer's fault that the case got dismissed. It was something right. that we took care of. Boom. So I would say only go after the city um, or whichever agency arrested you if you are pulled out of your car, you're beaten, um, while you're if you are detained, they are mistreating you, um, mm. while you're in jail, uh, if you go to jail, while you are in jail, if they're not feeding you, if somebody's fighting you, um, if the personal information is revealed. We filed a federal case um, against um, a county here in Texas when a young man, his, um, he was arrested and they went through his medical report. I um, mean, he had certain, you know, diagnosis that everybody doesn't need to know. Um, right. And it, it came yeah. out. The officer, <laughs> yep. the officer that um, arrested him, when he brought in, he said, oh, hey, this is the guy with the whatever, you know, mm. something, something. Mm -hmm. And then that mm -hmm. kind of triggered everybody in jail. Oh, he has, oh, we need to watch out. So right, right. that went forward, it was very uncomfortable for him in jail. You know, mm. people, the, the, everybody was messing with him. They were like, oh, you got, uh, we need to we stay away from him, stay away from him. So right, right, right. that right there, you can go after the county for that because your personal information was revealed. That's a violation of HIPAA. That's so right. wrong right there. So all of that. Right. Um, so if you were assaulted, if your information was leaked, um, if you were mistreated, you weren't fed, yes, I would sue the county. But if you just said, hey, the cop said some bad words to me. Now, now if he called you, you know, the N-word or some kind of racial slur, yes, I mm -hmm, would say that. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's just, oh, he cussed at me, nah. Oh, he arrested me, nah. Mm -hmm. you, you're not going to win that. So the, the, that's for for civil cases. What we, what right. we discussed in the previous uh, segment was uh, 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 filing a report on the officer. So... Mm -hmm. uh, when you say he said some words to me, some some bullying type words or intimidation, mm -hmm. um, yeah. have you ever advised your clients to file a complaint? Uh, so mm -hmm. maybe you've ruled out the civil case. It doesn't reach mm -hmm. the standard. Uh, right. but maybe the behavior of the officer was inappropriate. And so right. um, have you advised them to do that? Yeah. So I in some cases I have um, most of the time before the case even gets to me, they've already done that. So by the time it gets me, they be like, hey, I filed a complaint on this guy. So, yes, I advise that. Why? Because then later down the line, let's say we go to trial, um, we'll have that complaint. And then usually that isn't the officer's first time saying whatever he said to you, to somebody else. And so um, throughout the process of discovery and discovery is when you have to request all the evidence about that case. Usually it'll come out that the officer has said something else to another person. And I've had several cases where I received. Um, complaints written by other people for the officer that arrested my client. And so right. I had access okay. to all of that. So mm -hmm. if you file a complaint, even if it's not a civil case, if you file a complaint, you can use that in your case and you can also help somebody else later down the line. Right. Right. Absolutely. You mentioned qualified immunity earlier when we were talking mm -hmm. about this civil case. I'm going to just ask you flat out, what are your thoughts on qualified immunity for police officers? So it, it sucks 
it sucks mm-hmm. because you know if an officer, an officer could say, "Hey, I was doing my duty. Um, I pulled him out of the car. I didn't mean for him to get scratched up, beat up, or whatever. I was just doing what I need to do. I thought he had X. Okay, cool. He's protected because he's operating in his 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 um his role as a police officer. Mm-hmm. So I hate that it exists and it prevents certain civil cases from being filed against police officers or any elected official because it's not just for police officers. Right. Mm-hmm. Even though we just kind of focusing in on officers, it's for any elected right. official. Mm-hmm. So, you know, or any government official. So I hate that qualified immunity exists. Um, and in certain situations, if it didn't, you know, all kinds of cases will be against police officers. So it kind of protects certain elected officials from I, I, like the low level uh, mm-hmm. complaints. But as a defense attorney, you know, someone who has seen his some of his clients uh, mistreated, I hate it. Because I say, yeah, you can go ahead and file a case against the police officer. I won't do it because I know it's not going to go through. But if you find somebody who's able to push it through, that's good. But I just mm-hmm. hate that um, it applies to certain police officers. Um, right. I don't mind it applying to elected officials or what have you. But in my case, in my interaction, I hate that it applies to cops um, because they can do whatever they want and they're protected. Right. Right. And they are the ones with... Uh, this unique authority in our society, right? They are the ones with right. the badge. They are the ones with the gun. At, mm-hmm. at your own words, they have all the power in these interactions right. when they stop you. And yet and still, they have this layer, uh, a, for lack of a better term, a, a actually, I'm not going to say that based on January 6th. We're going to choose better mm-hmm. words. They have this mm-hmm. layer of protection uh, yeah. that other people just don't have. Uh, Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And, yes, and that's, yeah. that's that's because of their job title their mm-hmm. job title. Now, yeah. let me also say this to, to the young men who are watching young men, women, whoever is watching, do not, you know, don't, don't rely on stuff you see on the internet. Cause I know there's some people when they have interactions with officers, they be like, I know my right. According to section such, 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 you can't arrest me. You can't do this. That's a violation mm-hmm. of code four two. Don't do that because I was watching, you know, some body cams for my clients and they tried to be, you know, big and fancy. And they started reciting codes. But that was for another state. It had nothing to do with Texas. Oh. So, you know, people will mm. see something on Facebook, on Twitter, on IG, and they'll think that's the law here. Every state is different. Every county right. is different as well. So mm-hmm. don't just start reciting stuff if you don't know it. Like I said, the right. best thing to do is just be quiet. Give them your name. Mm-hmm. Shut up after that. Right. Right. That's good. That's good. I think that's a, a great note to end it on. Uh, Marcus, I am... Uh, So very thankful that you joined us and dropped uh, gems and knowledge uh, for us as we continue to work through Mm -hmm. just what what this what what it's going to look like as we move forward, as we push for, you know, police accountability uh, and and safety in our communities, Um, because I'm on I'm me personally, I'm on the side of we need cops. I, I mm-hmm. am never going to say we don't need cops because there are real bad people out there, right? Yes, like, absolutely. You know, absolutely. When I call 911, if it's going down, I need the police to be there. Yes. What I, I don't yes. need is when you get there, you treat me like yeah. a criminal. When I'm yep. the law-abiding, tax-paying citizen, and to my young folks watching, you being the law-abiding, tax-paying, although maybe not uh, 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 certain taxes that older adults pay, but you're paying taxes mm-hmm. on goods and services, which ultimately yep. finds its way to our governments on the local, state, and federal level. Uh, mm-hmm. So we are all law-abiding, tax-paying citizens that just want to be yep. treated fairly, equally, uh, with, with, with care, dignity, and respect. So, yep. yeah, I'm just thankful that you are here uh, with us to, to give us that. Thank you so much for having me, man. And like I said, if I could just end it on, you know, just um, if you guys need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, my IG is right there. You can send me a message on IG. Um, you know, if you have any questions, if somebody, you know, got into it with the law or, you know, had an encounter and they just need, you know, answers, um, I got you. So please don't be afraid to reach out. That's wonderful. Thank you for for offering that to, to us all. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.